ladies and gentlemen, the time is 4.30 p.m. and it is July 28th. Welcome to another update for Great Lakes Weather. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. And we are, of course, talking about severe weather, which is starting this week. Again, we have a warm and moist air mass that is surging in from the south that is likely going to contribute to some severe weather potential across the Great Lakes region. Again, July and August, this time of year, you start to see that northwesterly flow aloft, which tends to contribute to the potential for some severe weather. So we're going to start with tomorrow. Tomorrow is the next upcoming threat. I am planning on chasing this as long as the threat stays where it is at. The latest models have been shifting it further to the south. And again, further south means terrain gets rough, which typically means not really enough or not really the best terrain to observe severe weather in. So, marginal risk for severe weather exists for portions of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and southwest Ohio at this current moment. Now, I'm wondering how it's going to change within the next update because the latest models are starting to predict that it's really not going to include um, areas that are further to the north. It looks like that main focus for severe weather is going to be further south and cross portions of Indiana. And that's just something I'm looking out for because the models might change, they might shift it north, might shift it a little bit further west. I'm not sure exactly that just yet. And the models do have difficulty handling these kinds of setups. But there is potential that there could be some severe weather. And it actually is potential for all sphere hazards. Tornado potential 2%, wind 5%, and hail 5% as well. Now, don't don't equate the marginal risk with the potential for intensity of storms because again what marginal risk indicates is that there is a low confidence in severe weather within 25 miles of a point in the area okay so that mean that doesn't really equate to the intensity of the storm there is gonna be a lot of instability there could possibly be good spin with a low-level jet that could be enhancing this so I wouldn't be surprised to see the potential for damaging winds, tornadoes, and also some hail. Maybe some initial supercells before it quickly forms into a Boeing cluster. Again, that northwesterly flow aloft, that's kind of the pattern you typically tend to see. So that's the day two convective outlook. Day three convective outlook also puts the same area in a marginal risk for severe weather. This includes Illinois, Indiana, southwest Ohio. Um, again, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail just yet, but I will probably... Um, talk about that a little bit in probably not in a video, but maybe in a post or something along those lines. So we're focusing on tomorrow right now and the pattern that is going to be happening during this week because again, low confidence setups over the next several days because this is kind of an atmosphere that typically tends to be unpredictable, hard to project exactly what's going to happen. Why? Again, what's the pattern we got? We got a warm, moist air mass that is going to be coming in from the south. We have northwesterly flow aloft. That is an interaction between warm air, warm moist air and cooler, drier air aloft. What is that going to mean? Again, you're going to have that clashing of air. There's likely going to be storms that develop as a result. Again, when warm and cold, when warm air mass and cold air mass come together, that typically leads to some uh, interesting evolution. So here's what we got. We have this northwesterly flow that could flow into portions of Illinois. Tuesday or Monday evening. Okay, this is actually Monday at 8 p.m. This is what could drive some of the severe weather that we could see later on tomorrow. Okay, so again, this also includes portions of West Indiana. Um, the Euro does depict the development of these storms to be a little bit further east and north, but I keep in mind this is the 12Z model. Okay, the 18Z model is showing it shifting further south. Okay. Not too far south, but further to the south. We're going to talk about where that focus is in just a minute. But you can see northwesterly flow aloft, and then at the lower levels at the surface, you have warm, humid temperatures. Okay, So the temperature here, you're getting into the mid to upper 80s. Okay, And then as you get into the heat index, you can still see getting close to the 90s. That warm, humid air is starting to flow in. With that warm, humid air, you're going to have an unstable atmosphere. So again, your instability, if we were to pull that up real quick, you got instability starting to rebuild and recover. Okay, instability value is around 1,800 to 2,000. Okay, which is again the minimum threshold for severe weather development, and with enhanced, with enhanced upper level flow and possibly enhancement of a lower a lower level jet that we can show at the 700 millibar level, that will bring in some severe weather potential. So that is kind of what's being watched out for with regards to this setup here. HRR model. Let's take a look at exactly what it's suggesting this evolution could be. Again, models. Again, will change as they get up to the day, especially in this type of environment. So, I mean, you can't always bet off the models, but again, they give us a rough idea of where the location is going to be. So, 
Again, the big issue with this setup is that morning convection that comes through across Illinois. There is going to be some severe weather ongoing across portions of South Dakota later on tonight. And as that develops and moves in, it's also going to start to weaken as it approaches Illinois. So again, it's going to be weaker. But at however long it lasts is going to determine the recovery of instability back behind it. Okay, so again, if it lasts longer and it comes out to be a stronger storm that moves through, it's less likely we're going to see severe weather. However, if it dissipates quicker, severe weather is going to become a bigger concern across portions of Illinois and Indiana. Okay, so progressing it forward, what you see according to the HRR model is that these storms do develop across portions of eastern Illinois, western Indiana and begin to move to the southeast. Now, the storms in this environment will have a little bit of dynamics to work with. Okay, You have Cape Valley around 2,700. You have storm relativity around close to 200. Again, that's, that is tornado threshold. Low cloud bases here present also. Um, again, it is showing the potential for stronger storms that will occur across portions of southwest Indiana. And they will continue to progress. And they might form some clusters. Um, and then they will start to form a band that could possibly bow out, damaging winds, tornadoes, and hail possible with these storms. It's, it's showing that some of these storms will be cellular in nature. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more of a cluster that organizes into a MCS or band. But again, it is also possible that this scenario could potentially occur, but I don't think it's as likely. So and then we'll be watching Tuesday for severe weather potential as well, especially since as we go into Tuesday, we're going to see instability build quite a bit further to the north, and that's something we're going to watch out for as well. Now, NAM model. This is a comparison. This is the latest NAM model, just was released. We still have that convection, and this model actually portrays it as clearing out a little bit faster, and it also portrays the storms developing a little bit further to the north. This is the this is something I'm actually a bit more interested in if this model plays it out. So, again, it shows even a probably even more favorable environment for severe weather than the HRR does. With with more instability around 3300, SRH much is actually increased on this model. Good curvature in your hodograph that indicates that spin in your low levels. And then you have your low cloud bases. You have directional shear at the surface going up and higher up. You have your northwesterly flow aloft. So again, some interesting outputs being put out by the NAM, but you can see the NAM also portrays what I think is going to happen, that it goes out into a band and progresses further to the southeast. So that's something that is possible with these storms as they make their way through. So that's just something to keep in mind with this setup as it progresses. So, and then we're watching, keeping our eyes on tomorrow for the potential for some storms as well. You can see that in Illinois, there's some convective development that's being shown, but that's later on in the night. So it really shows that Tuesday might not even be an active day across portions of the Great Lakes. Probably not really too much in terms of lift that will support storms as they make their way in. So it looks like Tuesday might be a quieter day despite the instability, but at the same time, it's still going to be hot and humid. We'll start to see a transition to some more active weather possibly later on Wednesday. So Wednesday is a day to watch as well. All right, let's take a look at the pattern that we are expecting with this next week, okay? So you see that instability does build in Tuesday or Monday evening, and the GFS does place it further to the west in portions of Illinois and western Indiana. So as it as this warm air mass lifts to the north, you can see that there is actually a higher level of instability that is being portrayed across portions of northern Indiana across northern Illinois, and then all the way up through Iowa into even South Dakota. I would not be surprised to see a pretty strong band of storms develop along this area, progressing further southeast that could lead to severe weather, and I, possibly a derecho type setup again, which we've seen one of those already a couple weeks ago where we intercepted a couple tornadoes in Chicago associated with that one line. Uh, Wednesday, we have that instability even shifting further to the north across southwest Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. So again, you can see that the environment is present for severe weather. The one thing we're going to need is a source of lift. And as long as we get to get a source of lift, we will have the potential for several days of severe weather. And then even into Friday as well, or Thursday, before it finally gives us a break over the weekend. And then we might see a return of instability later on 
next week as well. So a lot at play with this setup, a lot of variables and still a lot of unpredictabilities with this setup. Um, we will be chasing potentially tomorrow in Indiana. The question is if it shifts further to the south, it's probably not going to be possible. But if it goes further to the north and even further to the west, there is better potential I could chase it at that point. So make sure to subscribe to stay updated. The live stream is posted and it is ready to go for tomorrow's severe weather event. So you can make sure to check that out um, and you can let get the notification that we're live. But we're going to try to keep you updated. We've updated some of our streaming capabilities. Location is back and actually better than before. Uh, so we will hopefully be able to keep you guys updated with better reporting and better information as with these storms on the ground. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you all later.